So this is a 2021 Keystone Montana High Country 376 FL. That's the front living room. We're going to show you a few things today that you might want to know before you consider purchasing one or after you purchase what you need to be ready for. Let's start out walking to the back here. This coach is about 42 feet long, 13 foot 8 high I believe and it's just big. One of the things that's interesting with this one, since it's a front living room, it's a rear bedroom with a loft above it. The way they get away with doing that is they do a drop frame. If you come over here and take a look behind the wheel, I don't know if you can see this, frame drops down eight inches, which is great for accommodating the bedroom. That causes problems though. With the overhang from the back wheels clear to the back of this thing, when you're hooked up, that frame is very close to the ground. I'm, I'm hooked to a 2014 Ram 2500, stock height, just a little bit larger tires. Right now, I have about 13 inches of clearance between the frame and the ground. The other catch with these is the fresh water tank is in the back, and so the drain is in the back. I didn't even get this thing home into my neighborhood, and we were scraping and tore off the drain for the clear, or for the fresh water. This is something that we believe that the dealership should have addressed from the factory, or if you happen to buy one of these, this should be done at the dealer before you even leave the lot. I've torn this fresh water drain off twice now, my solution to this, and I hope it works, I just had installed some two inch solid steel rollers. I want them closer. These are a weld on solid steel. They have a grease zerk so that when you actually come in and out of a driveway or a change in elevation from, for example, going downhill to up a hill, this bottom end is gonna catch on those rollers and hopefully smooth your ride as opposed to tearing up the frame or tearing off the freshwater drain. If you have a look underneath, you can see how I modified mine to be much shorter coming off the bottom of the tank and angle out to the side as opposed to coming straight down. This is simple PEX fittings, very easy to do. Something else to keep in mind, the 50 amp power outlet comes out the back. Well, this is a pretty long rig, right? So you'll find as you come into some campsites, that might be a little bit of a challenge for connecting to a utility, which may be, for example, up here somewhere. This refrigerator vent is about the max of where your 50, 50 amp power cable will extend to so when you're coming into your spot you need to keep that in mind so you don't go too far forward too far back and you actually have room to connect another thing to keep in mind when you're pulling into your spot is any obstructions that might be there the last campground we we're at we were fortunate enough to have a light pole smack dab in the side of our camp spot which had to be placed between the slide out and the door with the steps coming down. Not real convenient. The other thing to keep in mind is the sewer outlet on this particular one is right here underneath the steps. So if your sewer connection at your campsite happens to be right in about the space where these rear steps come down, it's a little bit of a problem. You don't really want that. The downside to this situation these steps fold in, they don't fold up. So you could camp and leave the steps folded in, but as you can see, that's going to block a good chunk of your hallway getting back to the bathroom or to the bedrooms in the back. The other thing to keep in mind with these steps, the way they fold in, any dirt, debris, dog hair, things like that, that are still on them when you fold them up, guess what? You fold that all right inside. So good idea to kick, clean them off and keep them clean before you fold them in. One other little idea. Lights in the compartments. 
This side is great. You have a light above your utilities where you're going to be hooking up your water, cable, things like that. And you have one more light over here. But with all the other storage compartments that this thing has, there are no other accessory lights. So if you're getting set up in the dark, you need something. I bought some little push button stick ons, and I have those across the front, in the back, on the side, and in the back. So you can see what you're doing when you're rubbing it around in there looking for s'more sticks or whatever the case may be. Simple little things, but they make life so much easier. So the labeling, that's great for our handles. We have gray, gray, and black. But when you open it up and you take a look inside, which is which? Well, it took me a little bit of figuring out on the two grays, bathroom, kitchen, and obviously the black has a black handle. But there's times where I may not want to completely dump one of the tanks. I want to save a little bit to flush. And I don't know if I'm dumping the kitchen or the bathroom, so why not label things and make it easier for the end user? Simple stuff. Okay, this one came with the auto level system. First time I've ever had one of these, I absolutely love it, but there is a little bit of a learning curve with it. When you first come in, you set it to raise and unhook, but that doesn't mean you just hit auto level and walk away and let us do its thing. If you're on a perfectly level spot, you can get away with that. The last time we were out, I didn't realize that the front of the coach was way higher than the rear. So when I went to auto level, it could not lower the front low enough or raise the back high enough, and it threw all kinds of errors. Well, we were out camping somewhere where there's no cell phone coverage, and I had a heck of a time trying to figure out how to get this thing to level itself. I basically had to give up on auto level and do it manually. The downside was I didn't have any bubble levels. I figured I've got auto level. Hey, I'm good. I don't need to worry about that anymore. Wrong. So what I've learned is you need to be fairly level before you even begin to hit the auto level button. So I went ahead and, and installed, if you want to take a quick look, I didn't want to do it, but I installed the good old-fashioned bubble level so I can have a rough idea of where my level is at before I even begin to touch auto level. Just one of those little things you kind of learn along the way. Other than that, all of, auto level is awesome. I love it. It makes life so much easier. Something else to keep in mind is storage. This thing has a ton of storage. In my previous travel trailer, and most travel trailers, you have a square tube bumper where you can store your sewer hose don't have that on one of these. It does, however, come with a PVC pipe storage right here, about three and a half, four feet long, which is only good for about 10 to 15 feet of sewer hose. In the experiences I've had camping, that's typically not enough. We've been in spots where you have to have 20 feet or more of sewer hose to get from the outlet to the dump. The way I solved that in this case is I took a piece of PVC fence post, 4x4, four four, cut it down to fit, attached it with a U-bolt, and I have a second section of sewer hose right here with the same style bumper cap that you would see on a standard travel trailer. I don't always have to use that, but having that extra piece of hose is very handy, and you don't usually want to store that inside your compartments where the smell could linger and even get up into the cabin. Okay, now we'll take a step inside and look at a few more things. Let's start out with the main control panel. It's pretty nicely laid out. It keeps all your switches centralized. However, it doesn't always tell you exactly what you're looking at. We had slide one, two, three, and four. You can figure out pretty quickly that it goes in a clockwise pattern. However, I don't understand why they don't just label these so they're much easier and take the guesswork out of it, especially for someone who's maybe never been in your coach and needs to open or close a slide. I've added labels to all these. Same with checking your tanks. There's gray one and gray two. One's a bathroom, one's a kitchen. Which is which? You don't know until you experiment with it. So I've labeled mine K for kitchen, B for bathroom. Accent light. It's not actually an accent light. This is the main lights in the entire dining and kitchen area. So why don't we call that main instead of accent? Doesn't make sense to me. Here's one I don't quite understand yet. This might have something to do with an airflow return, but as of right now, it doesn't appear to be the case. Underneath the steps down here, you'll notice it's vented. That could be an air return for the furnace or the air conditioning. But what I've noticed is 
when you're out camping, it is a very cold draft coming in from here. When I look down in there, I see duct work and wiring and things of that nature, but I don't see some any sort of an air return. If that's not an air return, I'm going to block that off. So now we're going to work our way up to the front of the coach here. And this small pet peeve of mine that's the remote control for the TV. It's nice to have a TV. It's nice to have the front window to be able to look out of, even though ours is a little dirty right now from the last road trip. The remote control. So, the sensor to pick up the remote control on the TV is at the very bottom. The TV is up as high as it'll go. So when you happen to be sitting back here relaxing, enjoying a cup of coffee, whatever the case may be, you point the remote at the TV and nothing happens because it's blocking the signal. You either have to raise it up high over your head, which is not very comfortable when you're channel surfing, or another way around it, we're not plugged in right now. If you simply hold the remote straight up and down, it will pick up the signal. Just a little pet peeve, but still kind of annoying until you figure that out. One other little pet peeve of mine is the doors. Front door has a really nice easy slider. You don't have to open it to unlatch it. It's a pass-through. I added a little pull handle, which is nice because really there's nothing else to grab hold of. If we take a look at the back screen door, it's completely different. You have to slide it open to unlatch the screen door. Why not use the exact same kind of a screen on the front and the back? Which brings me to my next pet peeve, keys. This coach has a key for the front door, a separate different key for the back door, a key for certain compartments, and a key for other compartments. Four different keys for one coach. Couldn't we simplify this to have one key for the front and back door and one key for all of the compartments? Work with your suppliers and get it figured out. It would be so much easier so I'm not packing a big stack of keys around with me. Another thing I wanted to point out on this coach is the vents. I'm 6'3", and there's no way I'm going to reach out without help. So they are powered vents. Awesome. And they have a fan. So here's the catch, though. Vent open. Okay, it's a little noisy, but it's going. Going, going, going. You turn the fan on and off if I want to. No big deal, right? When you hit fan off, it automatically wants to close the vent. Well, I maybe don't want that. Maybe I want the vent partially open. So I hit vent open. Nope, it's going all the way. Vent closed, no, it's all the way. You have no choice. The vent is all the way open or all the way closed. There is no cracking it unless you want to manually come up here and adjust with that. Who wants to do that? Next up on our list is a ceiling fan. It's a nice addition. You have low speed and high speed. And if you take a look, it puts off a decent amount of, uh, decent amount of wind. But you'll notice right underneath it, there was an additional LED light on the ceiling. I blacked out this light with some tape. I didn't disable it. I could always, you know, turn it back on later. The reason I did that, anytime this fan is on, when the lights are on, it's a strobe effect. It's like you're getting a seizure and you can't stand it. So we had to leave the lights off or leave the fan off, one or the other. Take your pick. We'll take a look in the bathroom real quick here and point out one other little caveat. As you can see, we actually use our RV. Up here, this makes a nice shelf. My wife was putting hair dryer, other odds and ends, things like that up there. But if you look, the wiring is exposed. So I've told her she has to be very careful when she is in here to not tear that off of there. Simple little cover was all it would take. So we're going to make our way back to the bedroom here, which was a huge problem for me when we first got this coach. You'll notice the step trim is made out of metal. When this first arrived, they used the same metal trim here with a mitered cut. This mitered cut on the edge 
I don't know if you've ever used metal trim before, but that basically became a blade and my wife slashed her ankle on it within a matter of hours of us packing up to get ready for our first trip. As you can see, I've modified that. I went and got some vinyl, cut it, heated it around the corner to make a smooth edge, mitered it. Nothing you can cut yourself on anymore. I mean, maybe as a worker at the factory wearing boots, it's common sense that you're not going to kick that or trip on it. But someone going camping wearing flip-flops or getting up in the morning to have a cup of coffee, you're going to slice yourself open on something like that. That was ridiculous. One other nice feature of this coach is it has USB jack jacks for charging all over the place. In the master bedroom, we have two jacks on this side. However, nothing on the other side. So to accommodate that, I added a 90 degree USB adapter and ran a nine foot cable underneath the mattress so that I can have a charger on my side because there's nothing over here besides a little shelf. There is an outlet down here, but I don't want to bring another phone charger with me and forget I left it in here. I just want to use a USB outlet. So that's something that the factory could have done a little bit better job on because we both have smartphones we want to charge. Here's another interesting feature. With the bedroom slide closed, the door cannot close. Yeah, that's why the door should be shut. Right? It does have a magnetic hook to hold it in place, but I would never drive down the road like that. So you always have to make sure this door is closed before you head down the road. Here we are again in the master bedroom. As you can see, there's a nice spot where you can hang a flat screen TV. I went and put a swing out arm on this one so you can lay in bed and watch TV. Works great. However, say you want a DVD player. Well, where do you put that? There is no place to put that. So I went and put in a little corner shelf over here and tried to hide the wiring a little bit in a loom back down to the TV. There is no place to put a DVD player unless you want to mount one against the wall and get real creative. You know, having these rear steps and rear door are incredibly handy, but as you noticed on the front, there's a nice swing out grab handle. Why not put one on here as well, on the back? That's a pretty good step off the ground, a good three feet before you're going into the coach. I wouldn't mind having something else to grab onto. So all in all, I know it sounds like I'm complaining a little bit here, but I really do love this fifth wheel. It's great for our family. We didn't really show you the loft upstairs, but it is a wall-to-wall -wall loft with stairs going up and motion lights, air conditioning fins up there, more USB chargers, cable outlets, perfect for the kids. This coach, I plan to keep a very long time. I am very happy with it. It's just a few of these little details that you need to work out. And I think the manufacturer should listen to the customers. We're the ones that are out testing these things in the field and getting new ideas for making them safer and better. But overall, take a look at this coach for yourself. Keep in mind some of those important things, particularly that rear frame being down low and needing some rollers. Other than that, you'll absolutely love it.